Okay, trust me, this is relevant. You know how when you're playing a game like Counter-Strike, you can often spectate by flying around a camera like this? This is pretty standard, like the video game equivalent of taking a camera and using it by hand. Obviously really useful, but not exactly optimal for creating a cinematic shot. Today we're talking cameras, because cameras are a big deal. Today's tip, rigging your camera in SFM. Okay, but why rig your camera? You can click and drag the camera into the viewport and then control it like the spectator. You can just animate it like this. So why bother making a rig? This is good enough for lots of cases, but why not take your camera game to another level? Just like how big cinematic movies construct camera rigs to film a scene or a shot, you can use SFM's built-in tools to really get the most out of this little guy we can take advantage of multiple layers of animation that allow you to tweak and play with the camera in a useful way. In other words, you take a complex task of animating a camera and you boil it down into animating three components. So let's figure out how to make one. First, place your camera. Next, you're gonna need three models. You're gonna realize later that you can actually do this with just two, but trust me, using three is optimal. You can pick any three since they're just helpers and we'll disable them in the render. But I like to filter for editor and use camera, axis helper, and thick axis helper. You can find these in source and source two. The thick axis will be our lock, the thin will be our aimer, and the camera model will be our pivot. Then of course we have the camera itself. That's four total components. First, lock the camera transform to every model's root transform. Then select and pull the zero slider. Let's select the aimer and pull it away with the red X axis arrow so it's perfectly in front of the camera. Make sure everything is unlocked here. Select the root transform of the aimer, then the root transform of the pivot. Right click, go to DAG Utilities menu and select the aim constraint. You should see this slider up here called weight, which controls the blend of the constraint. Hi, dumb idiot again. Uh, in Source 2, it's a little different. You have to go into the constraint menu and do an aim constraint like this. Uh, also, you have to do it the other way around. Start with the pivot, then click on the aimer and do it that way. Then select the root transform of the pivot and click and drag it to lock it into the camera lock. Then select the camera lock root transform and click drag that to lock to the camera transform. And there you go. You have a sick three layered camera rig. Select the pivot and you can now move the camera through space while maintaining the focus of the shot. You can select the aimer or the focus so that you can change where the shot is focusing. Just like this, you can see that the camera is always gonna move to follow where you're aiming it. Then you can use the X rotation of the camera lock to animate the tilt of the camera. Very simple. Also, if you're getting annoyed because you keep accidentally clicking on these polymorph bones, you can just click this little arrow next to the unknown category so that you stop clicking on them by accident. Hot tip. Rigging your camera doesn't necessarily give it the ability to do anything new. It just gives you a template that makes it easier to achieve a cinematic look by making the camera more simple to pose and even animate. For example, what if we have the scout looking over this vista? You can just fly the camera in and pose it just fine, but you run into difficulty with framing. It can be a lot of trial and error trying to frame the scout and the backdrop in a way that feels good. In framing, you have a basic concept like rule of thirds, where you split your frame in three horizontal and vertical imaginary lines. The four places these lines intersect are the points of interest in any given frame. This means that when you're designing a frame, you place everything you want people to really focus on in these areas. These four intersections are quite ironically called the thirds. The scout is our focal point for this shot, so we should have the scout positioned on one of our thirds. Well, let's throw in our camera rig. If you look through the camera view, you can see that our aim point is in the center, but check this out. Select the camera lock and rotate it so that the aimer is positioned on the third we want to use. Then let's take that aimer and place it inside the scout. Now you can see that scout will be framed in that same focal point. You can then select the pivot and find a good position for the camera. You'll see that wherever we move the camera pivot, our scout still remains properly framed because the pivot is always gonna be looking at the aimer. 
This rig is a good streamline, but you have to keep in mind that it's not going to be good for every case. So whatever kind of shot you're making, you can use these same exact tools to rig your camera in a way that will fit your shot better. Although sometimes the rigs can become very cumbersome with all the animation, uh, but what you can do with that is you can disconnect the camera from the rig, um, edit it by giving it jitter or something, and then reattach it, and there you go. Also, big red text warning, you cannot lock the aimer and the pivot to the same object or to each other because it'll create a loop in the rig and crash SFM. Check out my channel community page to vote for the next tip of the week. I have so many more cool tips and tricks I want to teach you all. Thanks for watching and talk to you again soon.